What's going on people? Goodison here. The transfer window is now over. I am going to analyse how Arsenal have done the transfer window. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more Arsenal content. I will be going through every single contract renegotiation. The loan moves that have happened at Arsenal. The player transfers going in and out. As well as the players that almost joined. And the players that should have left but hadn't. Right. We'll go all the way back to the beginning where David Luiz signed the contract late in June. I have to give this score a 6 out of 10. I feel like he does have leadership to help the defenders at the club. However, it is rumoured that he did take a pay cut to stay. But, he's a very inconsistent player. Sometimes he makes the headlines for the right reasons and pockets are a good footballer. But there are times where he makes headlines for the wrong reasons we move on to early july where two important footballers signed new contracts at the club i'm talking about ballers bukayo saka my guy and the brazilian sensation seven million pound bargain in gabriel martinelli both of these deals are definitely 10 out of 10 from me Talk about bukayo saka a year before, he was showing great potential. Featured in the European League games, not as regularly as this season. Emery put him in the spotlight against Frankfurt, where he was superb. His stock continued to rise. That brilliant assist against Newcastle under Arteta, amazing. He's since blossomed, and this guy is very versatile in our style of play. He can play left back, left wing back. Centre mid, right wing and left wing. This kid has bags of potential and Arsenal have managed to keep him in. Liverpool were interested. I believe Dortmund were interested as well. But he decided to pledge his future to Arsenal where he can blossom into a star. We go on to Gabriel Martinelli. A £7 million signing from the Brazilian fourth tier. He was linked with Manchester United, almost signed, but they didn't allow him to go in. But Arsenal signed him. He was meant to play under 23's football, but he impressed Unai Emery. Was brilliant against Nottingham Forest and was brilliant in the Europa League. These two players have big potential. I think these two players are wonderful. Amazing. 10 out of 10 for both of these deals, as I've said. Come on. Later in July, Arsenal had announced the contract extension of Konstantinos Mavropanos. The Greek footballer was then put on loan to Stuttgart. For me, what's happened, I've got to give it a 7 out of 10. And then, into August now, Arsenal let go of 55 members of staff, including Chief Scout Francis Kagigal. And I'm going to give this move a 4 out of 10. The PR team had a mayor here. The ownership of Arsenal had a mayor here. But will it be successful? We shall see. Then, this is where it gets tricky. Arsenal sign former Chelsea star William on a three year contract. That's right, a three year contract for a 32 year old. William is a very good footballer. But. His wages are unknown. Is it 100k a week or is it 220k a week? I have no idea. But Mikel Arteta was fundamental in his signing. If he's on 100k a week, I'll give this transfer a 7. I do believe William will become a successor at Arsenal in the long run. However, if it is double that, I'm going to have to give it a 3 out of 10. We move on to two defenders. That joined Arsenal, which with one I can understand, but the other makes no sense. The one that I can understand is Pablo Mari. A left sided centre off, left footed, for £7 million. We agreed a loan deal for him with the option to buy him for, which is £7 million. Not a bad deal, so I'm going to give that transfer a 6 out of 10. We needed a left-sided centre-half. 
He offers cover to Gabriel Magalhaes. However, he's injured. Which is a bit unfortunate. We then talk about Cedric Suarez. This one confuses me. Why have we signed a third choice right back? This one gets a 2 out of 10 from me. Sorry. The Armenian sensation, Mkhitaryan, left Arsenal. He permanently signed for Roma. From my understanding, he terminated his contract at Arsenal. That means 200 grand a week off the wage bill. And at Roma, got him for free. For me, I have to give it a, an 8. Yeah, an 8 out of 10. A day after Roma signed Mkhitaryan, we then go out and sign the centre-back that we needed. Gabriel Magalhaes. Magalhaes. For... Some are saying it's 22 million. Some are saying it's 27 million pounds we signed from Lille. I don't know. What I do know is he's going to become one of the best centre-backs in the Premier League. Have you watched him play? He's been phenomenal for us. Oof. Big prospect. Big prospect at Arsenal. And he looks like a very good signing for Arsenal. He looks like a rock at the back. I'm looking forward to watching him play and blossom into Brazil's number one centre half. I'm looking forward to it. This transfer, 10 out of 10. Bargain. He's got league on experience. Offers not just defensive capabilities and awareness capabilities, but he's a very good passer of the ball. And he's a left-sided centre-back that Arteta has wanted. How can I not give that a 10 out of 10? On to another brilliant sign-in. Yes, Danny Ceballos. We signed him yet again on a season-long loan from Real Madrid. For me, I was adamant that he was going to stay for another year at least. I wanted him to come back. After lockdown, he was superb. He had a brilliant performance against uh, Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Arteta was a massive admirer of his. And even even the game against uh, Liverpool in the Community Shield, he didn't even feature. But he made me happy with his celebrations. He's a very passionate footballer, very keen to improve, keen for first team football, one for the Spain squad for years to come. 9 out of 10 signing for me. But then it got better. Pierre Aubameyang signed the contract. He announced it himself on Arsenal social media page. Done an Instagram live where look, with the FA Cup, he was walking around the Emirates saying he signed the team. The deal of the window. 250 grand a week. <sighs> After that, it was time to say goodbye to a soldier at Arsenal. To a footballer that generated a brilliant story for the club. A footballer that shed tears of joy after winning us the FA Cup. A footballer that He's gone on loan to many clubs in the search for first team football. His dream was to play first team football for Arsenal. That footballer, Emiliano Martinez. He signed for Aston Villa for 20 million. This for me is one of the sales of the window. When you look at before Leno's injury, we would have been lucky enough to sell him for 3 million pounds. Now we sold him for £20 million, we are looking at how comes we didn't sell him for more. He has been an amazing servant to the club. He was brilliant after Leno's injury. Even before that, he was good in the Europa League. Assistant made brilliant saves. That save against Trent Alexander-Arnold to win, to win us the game. Oh, that's one of the saves of the season. We let go of him, and I have to give that transfer an 8 out of 10. I wish him so much success at Aston Villa, unless he's playing against Arsenal. And I, against Arsenal, I hope he drops Kangas and becomes Agent Martinez. 
but we had to let him go and it freed up funds and it was a perfect sale for us but yeah we move on we then signed Alex Rollison from Dijon for 1.9 million um, look, this is not a bad deal for Arsenal you know the goalkeeping coach trusted him said to Arteta this is a keeper we should sign for our backup I don't know much about him so I'm going to give this transfer a 6 out of 10 but then it came deadline day it came to deadline day and at 1.30pm well I had my lecture my seminar Arsenal somehow leaked it to AFC Bell and he told everyone that this deal was going to happen that Arsenal were going to sign Thomas Partey that Arsenal were going to go behind the flag on Madrid's back and pay La Liga the £45 million release clause then Arsenal RSVP 11 o'clock, be there. Oh, it was happening. And then it happened. And then the video came out. And you know after that. Big up everybody that showed me love, by the way. Over 100 views, over 10 likes. Oy! But yeah. We ended the transfer window on a high. And the part is to party time. Party time. 10 out of 10 transfer. We got the man. Apparently... I just read on the article earlier. Cronky funded the move. Shock. Yes. You heard me correctly. Cronky funded the transfer of Thomas Partey to Arsenal. He gave. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? I'm reading on my laptop, I'm like, no way, no way this is the truth. But it happened, baby. And we signed it. <sighs> to be fair, look, Torero wanted out. I'm going to give that transfer and an own move a 5 out of 10 because we should have got a nigga, we should have negotiated a fee anyway. I'm going to talk about Gwendozi right now. Okay, fair enough. A 9 out of 10 for a loan move for him. Okay. But the way Arsenal handled it, because I sold him for 35 million and instead he's online. So, 2 out of 10 from that. Now we move on to the transfers that almost happened. Rob Holding to Newcastle on loan. Should we have let him go? Yeah. Ainsley Maitland Niles to Wolves. Am I happy with it? Yes, I am. Another potential in was Jorginho on loan. Am I happy it didn't happen? Yes, I am. Oh, uh, it didn't happen. Am I gutted about it? Yes, I am. Kalasinac to Leverkusen. That, that didn't go through. Gutted. So, Christ, the Napoli didn't go through because Manchester City chose Diaz over Kulibali. It would have helped us a lot. Therefore, I'm gutted. And then Mustafi to Lazio, that fell through. Gutted. And then Saliba to St. Etienne on loan. Fell through. Look, I'm not going to talk about his personal life as I don't know. I feel like he should stay and work his way up in uh, the first team. Regardless of the circumstances, I think he's got big potential. But, would the move have been good for him? Yes. Well, this transfer window, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. We signed Partey, which is one of the deals of the window. We signed a centre back that we've been needing for a long time. Yes, we missed Dernal for Meccano, but so what? We got a Bamiyang tied to, tied to a new contract. We signed Bakayo Saka into a new contract. Same with Martinelli. We let go of Martinez for a very good fee. The only reason why it's not 10 is because the defenders didn't go. Players that are surplus to requirements didn't go for a good fee. We could have sold Granduzzi for higher than we did and we didn't because we leaked out information about him that forced other clubs not to make the move but yeah Pinyo Boy Gillison 8.5 is the final verdict I'm very happy 
Black Lives Matter every day. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. In a bit, people. In a bit.